Uh, <clears throat> so we know strong acids dissociate 100%. All right. Weak acids only partially dissociate and therefore are in equilibrium. Oh, I can't spell equilibrium. Okay. And instead of calling it KEQ, which we could, we could just say it's a KEQ, but because we come up with names for everything, we call it KA for the acid. There's also a KB, which we might get to today, but um, for the, what do you think the KB stands for? The base. All right. So if we have a weak acid, HX, we add it to water. What happens? Let me keep you more specific. What's good? What's the, what are the products going to be here? Yes, this is going to donate the acid, the proton to water. You're going to get H3O plus and X minus. What's the KEQ or the KA of this expression? Concentration of H3O plus X, or sorry, times concentration of X minus. Is that it? over HX, why do we not include the H2O? There you go, that is the KA. Okay, um, just a note, if you, if you have multiple protons, okay, so remember polyprotic, which means you can donate multiple protons, each successive form of that acid has its own KA. So if you look on your data package, or I, you can just look at the one I'm going to pull up here. If we look at H, I'll highlight it. Slide. Oh my gosh. H2PO4. Where's H3PO4? There's H3PO4, and then there should be HPO4. So every time H3PO4 is the strongest acid with 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 Ka, you take a proton off of that, you've got H2PO4 to the minus 1. Because it's already negatively charged, it's going to hold on to those protons a little stronger and not want to give them up. So the Ka is smaller, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8. So we went from negative three to negative eight. And if you do manage to get that proton off, you get to this one, HPO4 with a negative two charge, it is not gonna let go of that proton unless you rip it off with a really strong base and the Ka drops to negative 13, okay? So every time you pull a proton off of a polyprotic acid, its acidity or strength of the acid decreases, okay? So they all have to have their own Ka's. So you have to be specific in what Ka you pull off the table. Okay, you got to be really careful about that. All right. So there's, we've done these calculations before because they're KEQ calculations. So if we have a 0.24 molar solution of carbonic acid, H2CO3, it has a pH of 3.49 at 30 degrees. Calculate the Ka value of the carbonic acid at this temperature. Okay. So, uh, what do you think we do? What do you want to do? You should write out the equation. Exactly. So, H2CO3 plus water. The, the, actually, the very first thing you do should do, but we're in the weak acids lesson, so it's kind of redundant to do, is ask yourself, the acid I'm dealing with, is, is it a strong acid or a weak acid? And if it's a strong acid, you know it ionizes 100%. If it's a weak acid, then you got to do what we're about to do right now. Okay? 
So we start with 0 0.2, go away. We start with 0 0.24 molar. How much HCO3 minus and H3O plus do we have? We have zero, right? That's our initial. Essentially, we're doing an ice table here, people. OK. What's the concentration of H3O plus at the end once it ionizes? Or can you tell me how to find it? Hmm? You add X? Well, we actually know what it is. It's tied to the pH. If you know the pH, then you know the protein, the protein, the proton concentration, right? Because what's the formula for pH? pH equals negative log concentration of H2O plus. That's always floating around in the back of your head. So if I know the pH, I can find the concentration by going 3.49. We've all done math 12, right? No? Okay, then you need to remember this formula. <laughs> um, and I, I gave you this formula the other day. The concentration of H3O plus is 10 to the negative pH. The reason that is, is because for the people that took math 12, you changed the exponential form, divide the negative off, the base 10 moves over, and you get 10, 10 to the negative 3.49. Equals the concentration H2O plus, which is 3.24 times 10 to the minus 4. Do we agree with that? Okay. So what this says is in a container, we have this much, this concentration of carbonic acid. It has this pH, which means it is dissociated so that we have 3.24. So the change here is 3.24 times 10 to the minus four. That's how much H3O plus we have in the container. All right, that makes sense? Or the concentration of it anyway. How much HCO3 minus do we have? You have the same, right? This is a one-to-one -one relationship, right? Because this came from this. So, you have to have the same. What am I writing here? What's the change? Well, is it x? We know what the number is. This donated a proton to give us this amount, right? So, what's the minus part here? There you go. Minus 3.24 times 10 to the minus 4. So then you do the math. 0.24 minus 3.24 times 10 to the minus 4 is 0.24. If you punch it in your calculator and do sig figs, you'll see that. And then the final amounts of these two are the same. And then we write the Ka expression. And then just plug in your numbers.
Does that make sense? One, I guess. All right. Yes. Uh, it is the final value, but the question is asking what's the KA? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, you can't see it. Calculate the K. If I just said, what's the concentration of H2O plus, then that would be the answer. Well, you just put zero point two one because yeah, if you do it, the sig figs play out. They don't, they don't work because that's four decimal places. So, yep. Why is the Because you have to look at it as you have a liter of water. I dumped in this, and then you kind of like pretend that it's like frozen in time for a sec. Okay. And you have 0.24 molar of this. And then you let time flow. It dissociates. Okay. And that's why you get these ones. In reality, is it happens instantly, right? We just kind of pretend that there's a time lapse when you dump it in to when it dissociates. Okay. Anything else? Okay. That's the first type of problem you will see. Um, let's go to the second type. Oh, and just a note here. Yeah, somebody already asked this. This is such a small number. If you look at sig figs, you get the same initial concentration. That's just an indication of how little it dissociates when we say a weak acid. Okay. Um, all right. Determine the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of acetic acid. What's acetic acid? What? Vinegar. What were you saying? That. <laughs> that? <laughs> oh, you're just pointing at the formula? Thanks. <laughs> uh, that's vinegar. All right. 0.2 molar solution of acetic acid. So this time we're trying to calculate the pH. Is this a strong acid? Are you okay? We're gonna do this just because we have to be it's fair. If you're not sure if it's a strong acid, you go to your data booklet. These are the strong acids, they're in a different color. What they're grayed out. Okay, they're grayed out. Are they not grayed out in yours? Okay. So the ones that don't even have a KA are the strong acids, all right? Most of the acids that you've dealt with in your chemical experience, that sounds really bad, actually, in your chemistry classes are like sulfuric, uh, hydrochloric, and nitric, the strong acids. Because they're, they're, you know what the final concentration is. They're very easy to deal with. The weak acids, I mean, you've dealt with vinegar probably in grade 11. We measured the Ka or the uh, pH of vinegar. Um, but most of the stuff we deal with is strong acids because it's they're easy to work with in a sense. Okay, so but if they're not in that list, everything else is weak. Okay? But that's the first thing you have to ask yourself. Is it a strong acid or a weak acid? We have a weak acid. So what do we do? You got to do something before you can do anything. You write the dissociation. Side note for those of you that remember or don't remember your organic chemistry, this is an organic acid. Which H, which of the H, which of the hydrogens gets donated? The one on the oxygen. Okay, the ones that are attached to the carbon, these ones don't get touched. It's the one attached to the oxygen. So, you could write it this way as well. So, whoa, not like that.
That's essentially the same thing. Okay. I don't care which way you write it. All right. Remember we talked about H plus and H3O plus are kind of the same thing last week. Okay. So set up our ice table. Whoa, what do we know? 0 0.2. That's pretty much all we know. And we have, we don't care about water. It's irrelevant. We have zero. We have come on, zero of that and zero of that. Then we unfreeze time and it dissociates. How much of the, the products do we get? Do we know? We don't have the pH, right? If we had the pH, we could put a number in there. But because we don't have the pH, we don't. So we have to put x. And it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So it's just plus x plus x. What, what's the change on the left-hand side? It's just minus x, because you only use one. So at equilibrium, we have 0 0.2 minus x. We have x, and we have x. What is the Ka of acetic acid? If it's not given to you, you have to go to your data package. OK. I need a new pen. So the Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. All right, we write the Ka expression and solve for x. Only if you don't want to use the quadratic equation. All right. So we know that the Ka is 1.8. No, that is x. That is x. Now, as Noah pointed out, this thing. You can always assume that the 0.2 is going to be way, way bigger. We just saw that in the previous, right? Like here. The initial minus this tiny amount was just the initial, essentially. This is fine. This assumption is fine as long as you don't go, like your initial amount isn't to like four decimal places. Okay? Because if you do do that, then sig figs start to play a role and you have to use the quadratic. I'm not going to give you a question like that. But just be aware if you're doing real life chemistry, it could play a part and you might have to use the quadratic equation depending on how precise you need to be. Okay, so we can say 0 0.2 is way, way bigger than x. So we just write 0 0.2. <clears throat> and then we math it. So we get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0 0.2 is equal to x squared. Then you square root it and you get the positive and negative root. You keep them both. <laughs> you do not keep them both. So you get x is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And that equals the concentration of H3O plus. All right, because there's our x right there. Are we done? What do we have to do? We have to find the pH. But because we know the concentration, pH is equal to 10. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong formula. Negative log concentration of 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 2.7, 2.72. There you go. That is it. It's the same stuff we've been doing over and over again. All right? Yes. Could uh, that also be used as a base? Could what also be used uh, as a base? The acetate? 
it would be a base in the reverse reaction and I should put an equilibrium equation. Um, yeah, in the reverse reaction, it is the base. It's that HCO plus is the acid donating to the acetate. So it's this conjugate base of the acid. Yeah. And then next lesson is finding KBs and stuff like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? My sort of. question was to oxygen OH. Instead of CH, going to CH. Oh, I see. What, uh, no, because. To rip that off. This bond is that's negative, that's partial positive, but this is a strong covalent. Co this is a strong covalent bond that you'd have to do a special reaction that would cleave that. So, yeah. All right, uh, answer the questions attached to it, please. I'll put the answer key in the classroom.